So Wednesday, we're doing a new Venezuela video, Testigo Venezuela, which is my series of interviews on what's going on in the country. We're going to have a new guest. I uh, haven't spoken to them yet. Uh, I think I spoke to them one time, but that was when we tried to have a YouTube interview and it didn't work. Uh, so we're going to address a lot of the, the, the latest issues that have cropped up over there. There's one issue, though, that I don't know if it's really on the radar screens of most Venezuelans or people around the world, because uh, to be honest with you, it happens in an area of Venezuela that's even further from uh, world attention, which is the Amazon uh, interior. You know, the Amazon basin is one of the most uh, important natural uh, resources in the world and natural, um, you know, geographical areas where, you know, there's a lot of different uh, rare species that are not found anywhere else. And what's been going on? Well, the title of this article, uh, which I'll show you on the screen, is Venezuela's mining arc boom sweeps up indigenous people and cultures. That's the Arco Minero. It says in 2016, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro declared the opening of the Arco Minero, which sprawls in an east-west crescent across 112,000 square kilometers, mostly in Bol Bolivar State, south of the Orinoco River and the Venezuelan Amazon. Orinoco is also a very long river in South America. Indigenous communities within the Arco Minero were given no say in the development of mining in their region or near their territories, a clear violation of the International Labor Organization's 169, 169 Convention, an agreement to which Venezuela is a party. Mining is not only spreading in Bolivar's, Bolivar's mining arc, where armed gangs in the military compete for gold, my, diamond, and coltan claims, but also into Venezuela's Amazonas state to the south. Indigenous men and women leave their ancestral communities and small farms to do backbreaking and dangerous work in the mines for little money. Violence against and conflicts with indigenous communities can be expected to escalate as Venezuelan armed gangs and military organizations and Colombian guerrilla groups can continue to expand their presence in the region and flex their muscles in the mining areas. So I'm not gonna read the article word for word. It is pretty long, it's, it's worth reading, okay? I share a lot of articles. Uh, not every article I, I share because, so that you can read the whole thing. Uh, it's, it's just to show where I get the source sometimes. Uh, although, you know, if, if you have the time of the day and, and you know, for example, you're, you want to call bullshit on me, well, well check my source. Um, but this article is, is, is very interesting. And I actually reached out to the, art, to the, to the uh, writer of the article and asked him to come on. He didn't want to come on video, so I actually sent him a list of questions. And I'm going to read out the answers to them. Uh, his name's uh, Bram Bram Ebus, and um, you know he he goes and uh, says the nation's failed petro economy, disastrous governmental policies, and a non-existent job market have brought them all to Las Claritas and its surrounding mines to eke out uh, hard scrabble living and to feed their hard, uh, hungry family. He's talking about artisanal miners, you know, like like private. Th this is basically the equivalent of people. Uh, it, this is how desperate it's become. In the 21st century, people have basically re reverted to uh, these prospectors back in the gold rush of, of, of the 1840s in California. That, that's how desperate it is. Um, it says, mining a lord of the indigenous rural poor. Las Claritas lies in the middle of Bolivar State and is part of a vast region targeted in 2016 by Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro for ma massive mining operations as part of the Arco Minero. So, so those of you who, the, the, the people left, and I, I do find people like that, who are defending the Maduro regime, realize that, that he's been expanding uh, not only that now he, he's he's I guess you could say he's helping the environment because he's destroyed his country's oil industry through mismanagement. So you can make that point. But um, he, he's also doing a lot of damage to, you know, the, the, the wildlife 
and the ecology of, of you know, the Amazon region, okay? The, the, if, if you're a progressive, uh, remember, before this whole global warming issue, uh, we wanted to save the rainforest, and I still want to save the rainforest, and I believe in it. And, I, and you know, Manga Bay is a conservation website, which I like. Uh, actually, I was just in, I was introduced to it through this article, but you know I'm I'm getting to like this this website even more. I, th I think he he also shared it on um, a different platform. I think it was uh, well, I'm not quite sure. I think he mentions it later. Um, it says there are 198 indigenous communities in Bolivar State, and their people, mostly small scale farmers, have been drawn to give up their traditional ways of life to enter the mining arc, largely prompted by Venezuela's astonishing inflation rate, as well as by the rapidly escalating cost of living, which came along with the mining bonanza. Many of men, of course, work the gold, Colton, and diamond claims, but indigenous women also toil in the mines and around them, preparing and selling food, cleaning accommodations, and working as prostitutes. So, so look, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I guess, We've gotten uh, Info Amazonia is the other is the other website that this is on. Um, you know, socialism it's 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 closed the gender gap by having men work manual labor and women work as auxiliary. Oh, oh wait, no, that I guess that's the opposite of closing the gender gap. And it, so uh, it's worsened working conditions. It's actually only cemented, you know, gender roles between men and women. So, so, I mean, I guess you could say that socialism uh, didn't solve anything in, in Venezuela. I mean, who, who, who the fucking thunk it? Uh, we should dedicate more time to things that are not related to mining, but you see that members of the community spend the whole year in the mine, says Brian Clark. He's an indigenous leader in Jobo Chirima, a community in the proximity of Las Claritas, Jobo Chirima, has seen a major drain of farmers away from croplands into illegal mines. So people are abandoning the, you know, the gr the growing of, of food crops in order to, to be able to just live. Importantly, indigenous communities within the Arco Minero have been given no say in the development of mining in their regions. So they've not been consulted or given the right to free prior and informed consent for mining projects to impact their territories as required by the international labor organizations 169 convention, an agreement to which Venezuela is a party. Um, and, and, you know, there's, there's so much here that, you know, I'll just get to the questions and answer that, that I asked him. So, so I asked him, you know, I didn't, I didn't want it to be all about just my, you know, my beliefs and, and what I think is going on in Venezuela. I did, I did want to ask a little about the conservation, which, which is in, in and of itself, it's a very important topic. You know, it's just as important as, well, I don't know if it's just as important, but it's also important in the scheme, in the scheme of things. So I said, um, I asked if the Maduro government wanted to develop the Arco Minero, why is it that now the mining appears to be to have been to, to have been taken over by wildcat miners and not by officially approved ones? Is this related to the country's fiscal crisis? And he says illegal mining already exists long, since long before talks about the Arco Minero. It is true that the size of the informal sector increased due to the crisis in the country. Economic migrants, sometimes with university degrees, went to the mining regions as no jo jobs were available and because the Bolivar lost its value. So, so people from the cities, educated people who have degrees and, and, and you know, white collar, <laughs> you know, capacities were, were, were so out of, put out that they went and, and, and worked as miners and still are. Uh, the same goes for organized crime that increasingly took an interest in illegal mining. The sindicatos have their origin in the now imploded construction center sector in Puerto Ordaz and Ciudad Bolivar. Concerning Maduro, he has been incapable incap of formalizing the sector if this is what he wanted to do in the first place. In the interest of the army, political elites, and organized crime in illegal markets will prevent that most minerals will enter the legal market from the Banco Comercial of Venezuela, which is the source he cites. <clears throat> so I ask, your article delved into the growing Colton trade in Amazonas state by, by Colombian armed groups. 
Are those groups aiming to continue the armed insurgency in the future against the Colombian government? Is it, go, is it going on at the moment? He says, hard to say. I doubt that is what's going on at the moment. What is certain is that they make a lot of money from illegal mining. So you have armed gangster groups that are technically political guerrillas uh, just making money with people. And, and you know, we're going we're gonna to get to some, some of the more shit that's going on in the next questions. It said, um, so here, here we go. What are the species of plants and wildlife in that region most admit at risk from these wildcat mining operations. He said the area slated for mining holds seven natural monuments and five national parks. The most significant of these is Kanaima National Park, a 12,000 square mile UNESCO World Heritage Site known for its unique topography of flat topped mountain formations known as tepuis. One third of the plants here are found nowhere else on the planet. Kanaima harbors nearly half of the neotropical migratory birds that winter in South America. <laughs> so, you know, that sucks for the fucking birds. As well as an, an astounding array of wild animals, including jaguars, giant ant eaters, ocelots, and giant armadillos. The ocelots, I think, are only native to, to South America, by the way. They're, they're like a smaller big cat, smaller than leopards and jaguars. Uh, so you have ant eaters, uh, armadillos, ocelots, the party also hosts the highest waterfall in the world, Salto on Hill, which is more than 15 times higher than Niagara Falls. Um, let me see if I can find some photos of this. So, this is earthisland.org. And, oh, there's another article by him. I'm going to read this too later, but, you know. Very interesting. So, so you know, I, I think the environment, guard, you know, safeguarding the environment, that, that's one of the main issues I have with the Trump administration. They're, they're, not, they're not looking to conserve the environment. They, they don't care about it. It's all about the economics. And I'm a, I'm a very economically minded person, too. But, but when you, you know, degrade the natural um, integrity of, of the world, um, I, I think that eventually the economy will, um, you know, grind to a halt too. I, I don't think that you can you can just spend and use and 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 destroy in excess. It, it doesn't work that way. Uh, you have to do things in moderation. So Salto on Hell. Let me see if I can get a photo of that. That's yeah, a pretty. Oh, it's Angel Falls. So, I'll just show you a photo of that. This is what it looks like. It doesn't look fantastic. That's in Venezuela. So I don't know if, if this is directly threatened by the mining operations. It could be that this is not within the, the scope of that. But uh, yeah, yeah, we're looking at Maduro and his government have screwed the country so hard that, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, like areas like this, areas around, around monuments like this and, and, and uh, natural wonders are, are really threatened. And, and I think you know, for progressives want to oppose the Trump agenda because of what it does to natural, uh, you know, na uh, na uh, nature parks and national monuments and things like that over here. Yeah, yeah, I, th I think you do have a point there, and, and I would agree with you on that. So, so therefore, you should you should be just as adamant that this Maduro regime be done away with in Venezuela because there sure as shit isn't any safeguard over there against uh, plundering these uh, nat natural resources. It's, it's really, it's a problem that should be universally condemned. You know, I think, I think it, it transcends all political ideologies and, and uh, well, apparently not communism and socialism because people don't care about that. Uh, but let's get to the next question. There's only two more. It says, do you remember seeing evidence of malnutrition among the indigenous peoples that you met? So he said malnutrition, malaria, many stories about child mortality, et cetera. And then I, I asked, are the indigenous citizens also being press ganged into some of these criminal groups, guerrilla organizations or other armed forces in the in the region? 
uh, I said reason by mistake, but he said, correct, especially in the Amazonas department, we can speak about slavery. Uh, indigenous underage girls are trafficked and forced to prostitute themselves in the mines. Men are marked and put to work. In Bolivar, I'm confident to say that culture and livelihoods are changed under pressure by mining economies that encroach indigenous communities. So, so nobody's been empowered by this bullshit. On the contrary, people have been enslaved by this. And there's people who will continue to apologize and, and, and claim, you know, apologize on behalf of the Maduro regime and, and, and you know, justify everything they're doing by saying, oh, it's, it's the World Bank and it's the Bilderbergers and all that. And, and, you know, you should still see my video. I think it's in the, it's in the, it's in the description, uh, you know, which I say I, how I probably know more shit about Venezuela than you think. You know, and, and I talk about that. There's people, come what may, they will stick by this regime because they are committed to it. They are committed to its ideology, even though its ideology is meaningless at this point. The ideology that it's powered by is power. It's not power to the people. It's just gathering more power. And, and I think even, even people who have been traditionally socialists have now understood that. And it must be done away with. Uh, and and I, hope, I hope it can be done away with internally as opposed to externally, you know, somebody invading it. Because otherwise, I don't know how we would be able to deal with, um, you know, another war. And, uh, you know, I'm against it. So that's about it. Uh, enjoy the upcoming episode, which I'm hoping we're going to have on uh, Wednesday. Uh, which I'm, I'm publishing this video on Wednesday anyway. And, uh, you know, leave your comments below and check out these articles. And I'll also put some, some more links here too that I'm seeing. Uh, take it easy.